Welcome to our webinar. My name is Victoria and I am your host today. So before we start, just a few remarks for your information. Please feel free to type in any questions that come up during the webinar in our questions box. We will answer as many questions as possible at the end of the webinar. And if there are too many questions, don't worry, we will answer each question via email within the next days. If there are any technical problems, please don't worry. This webinar is being recorded for you, so you will automatically receive a recording of the webinar within the next two days by email. Now, I would like to introduce you to our today's speaker, Dr. Elena Mukina. Elena studied physics and mathematics at the Yaroslav State University and has a PhD in physics. She has been part of the NETCH analyzing and testing family for over 20 years now and has gained lots of experience in our R&D department before taking over the position of the business field manager for the software Kinetics Neo. Elena has been a huge contribution to the development of the Kinetics Neo software, which she will demonstrate today. So welcome, Elena. We are happy to have you here today talking about kinetic methods for TD24 in thermal risk assessment of chemical processes. I will now hand over to you to get started. Enjoy our webinar. Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on your country and on your continent. Uh, we are here in Germany. We have a sun and a lot of snow here on the ground. And today I have a webinar for you, which is kinetics methods for determination of temperature TD24 in thermal risk analysis of chemical processes. Here. Uh, we have agenda. Uh, firstly, is introduction, what is necessary to know and why. Then we have a definitions for characteristic temperatures of the process. Thermal risk, primary and secondary reaction, what is TD24 and why it is important. Then, then we have a uh, kinetic methods of calculation TD24, uh, which are offered by our company, by Nature uh, theory examples, experimental data and kinetic analysis by different methods, linear TMR extrapolation, non-linear TMR extrapolation, and uh, advanced kinetic by kinetics neo software. A first is introduction, what is necessary to know and why. Here uh, you know and you work, everybody of you work with chemical industry and uh, we need chemical industry and uh, chemical processes in industrial scale to develop new materials, new colors, new textiles, pharmaceutical, to work with nutrition. Uh, reactions uh, to work with fine chemicals and uh, during the work with all of the things we have some risk in chemical processes and we have risk in different processes during manufacture, transportation or storage and if something goes wrong uh, then it is a really very dangerous dangerous and it could be a thermal runaway and with very very hard consequences it could be fire it could be explosion it could be some real economic loss of many millions of dollars or euro and uh, mostly dangerous consequence is connected with the health of the people it's insurance and death and now we would like to know how to find some parameters to uh, decrease this risk of thermal runaway uh, the mostly risk has uh, two key parameters severity and probability severity shows uh, how hard, how heavy are the consequences of uh, our accident in chemical process. For example, for life it could be not so heavy with ambulance treatment, then 
more heavy with hospitalization, long-term disability or catastrophic, it could be really with fatality. For example, in another category uh, with business continuity, with business, it could be either not affected, uh, then uh, production could be stopped for a short time, for one week or for several weeks or more than one month. It is already catastrophic severity. This is a first parameter of risk and risk is production of a product of two parameters. The first is severity and the second is probability. Probability shows how frequent this accident happens. It could happen very frequently, several times in a week or maybe once in months, in a year, once per 10 years or one per 100 years. And uh, then the product of severity and probability bring, um, bring the risk. If severity is low or probability is low, then we are here somewhere in low risk area. So it means that either it doesn't happen or it happens but uh, without any big problems. So here it's more or less safe. Then there is a region of high risk. We should never go here. We should never plan, plan our uh, chemical process to go in high risk area. And somewhere in the middle, we have some area where we must plan our chemical experiment, chemical process, and to see how high is risk and what should we do to make this risk low. For risk factors, uh, there are generally many risk factors, for example, physical properties for boiling, melting, chemical properties, for example, sensitivity to light, air, toxicity, ecotoxicity, uh, fire explosion, some chemical interactions which, for example, undesired reactions. They are generally, we will not speak about all of them, we will speak about risk factors in thermal process. For thermal process, uh, we speak about thermal effects. Uh, for this risk and for this thermal effects, we should know the following parameters, heat of reactions, heat capacity, melting evaporation, enthalpy, adiabatic temperature rise, dependence of reaction rate on temperature, and it is important, of course, to have heat removal during cooling. Thermal effects are usually work together with pressure effects, for example, gas release or vapor pressure. But now we will not speak about them, we will speak about uh, thermal effects only. To find these parameters, we use methods of thermal analysis and uh, with these methods we can find these parameters. For example, DC, differential scanning calorimeter or ARC, its accelerating uh, reaction calorimeter. For dependence of reaction rate on temperature and for estimation, some uh, key parameters, for example, TD24, we use kinetic parameter, uh, kinetic analysis. And here we can use a TMR approximation, linear or non-linear approximation, and we use our software, which is kinetic snail software. And now, if we speak about a runaway reaction, again, risk has two factors, severity and probability. And severity for runaway reaction is connected with temperature scale. What is the temperature increase during our reaction? If we have very easy reaction, for example, of, I don't know, curing of adhesive, where temperature increase is only 20 K, then it is not dangerous. So if the temperature increase less than 50 degrees C, then uh, this severity is low. But if it's above 400 K, then it is very dangerous and severity is high. That was the first key parameter. And the second one is probability. Probability is connected with time scale. Uh, and this time scale shows, 
uh, how many time do we have uh, from the failure of cooling, cooling failure, to the time to maximum rate or to thermal explosion. And if we have uh, some time, time to maximum rate less than one hour, then we have no another choice as go away uh, from this dangerous place. And in this case, it is very high probability of uh, the runaway reaction. But if the time to maximum rate is more than 100 hours, then we have enough time to uh, make so some actions and to have influence on our process and to avoid runaway reaction. And in this case, the probability of runaway reaction is low. So again, we have severity, which is connected with temperature, and another is probability, which is connected with time. And if we speak about, uh, yeah, here is one curve where uh, the increase, the temperature increase goes adiabatically. We have initial temperature of material, final temperature of material. Difference between them shows uh, adiabatic temperature increase. And this is the key parameter for severity, its temperature rise. And additional parameter is probability. Probability is a time difference from the beginning of adiabatic reaction to the uh, point of time of maximum rate. This is the inflection point of our on our temperature curve, and this difference is uh, time to maximum rate. This is the probability parameter, and we can have time to maximum rate adiabatic TD24, TDH here from this probability parameters. And now definitions. Uh, here, if the process, we have a normal process, then everything works well. Uh, we have heat generation during uh, exothermal chemical reaction, reaction inside our chemical process. And this heat could be must be removed. Uh, firstly, there should be steering inside a uh, reactor in order to have a homogeneous temperature inside the whole reactor. And then the cooling system must work just to remove the energy. And if then, if everything works well, then the temperature of reaction is under control. If steering doesn't work or cooling doesn't work, then removing of heat doesn't work as well. And then this heat generation goes to heat accumulation inside our material. And uh, if we have heat accumulation, then we have increasing of temperature. And you know that according to Van Hoff Roller, if you make a heating of material by 10K, then the reaction rate increased twice. So during the heat accumulation, we have increasing of temperature of material and we have increasing of reaction rate. And the increasing of reaction rate make again to temperature rise and to self-acceleration and then it could be really very dangerous. Now with a temperature. Again, here is a temperature, here is time. If everything works very well, then we have a constant process temperature. Everything works well, under control. And then at some time point, we have a cooling failure. Let's see what happens after this point. After this point, cooling doesn't work and the heat from chemical reaction goes for accumulation of the heat and increasing of the temperature inside our material. And uh, each, the increasing will go until the point where no any reactant inside a reactor, no any unreacted material is uh, exist. And the final temperature of this reaction called MTSR, 
So this is the primary reaction. It's usually synthesis. And during this reaction, we um, try to to have a product which is uh, our, the product of our chemical process. And uh, this MTSR is a uh, maximum temperature of synthesis reaction. The characteristic of this is the heat of this uh, reaction and temperature increase of this reaction is delta T adiabatic. If after that, happens nothing then everybody is happy and uh, it's not dangerous but uh, sometimes this temperature is so high that uh, at high temperature another a uh, totally another reaction could be triggered and this another temp another reaction is a secondary reaction and it is usually decomposition it has much higher heat of reaction decomposition heat and much higher delta t adiabatic and uh, the main characteristic is this delta t adiabatic and time to maximum rate, rate from MTSR and uh, here we have this value time to maximum rate and another parameter is time to maximum rate from TP from the process temperature and if we know this everything then we could make some estimation of risk. Additionally to these characteristic temperatures there is MTT here MTT is a maximum of temperature, temper, technical temperature. For example, if we have an open system with water and this water has some boiling temperature and we can put a lot of energy to this water, but the temperature of the water will be never above 100 degrees C. Why? Because it's a boiling temperature here. For closed, uh, for closed systems, the maximum uh, pressure and corresponding temperatures are there are work as the maximum temp technical temperature so here this maximum technical temperature is uh, the temperature which can work sometimes as a safety barrier for our case and this technical temperature could be inside of the primary reaction or inside of secondary reaction or between them Let's go here. Uh, for all reactions, it doesn't matter primary or secondary, there is very important parameters which called T24. So here we have our curve uh, is temperature versus time is adiabatic increasing of uh, temperature during um, adiabatic conditions. And here we have inflection point. And if the time to maximum rate from the beginning of adiabatic temperature to this inflection point is equal to 24 hours, then initial temperature at the first time point called TD24. So this is a temperature where we have time to maximum rate 24 hours. If we have initial temperature above this one, then uh, the heating will happen once more intensive and time to maximum rate will be uh, less than 24 hours. We have high risk and uh, in this case it's not very nice. If we have uh, temperature initial temperature less than TD24, then a reaction goes slow and we have time to maximum rate more than 24 hours. We have more time to make some influence on our runaway reaction and to avoid this. And now we have lower risk. So this value TD24 uh, means that from this temperature we have 24 hours to the end of reaction. We can say that it is begin of reaction but it is uh, not really correct. We can say that it is a temperature after which we have 24 hours. And now let's see what 
kind of combination of this temperature could happen. Uh, first is the process temperature. Here we have a temperature on vertical axis. We have a process temperature, then we have uh, MTSR, end of primary reaction. Here is our first reaction, temperature increase during primary reaction. Then we have TD24, it's a secondary reaction. From here uh, we have 24 hours during the heating uh, of temperature uh, uh, during self-heating because of secondary reaction. And here we have some time between them, between end of primary reaction and beginning of secondary reaction. And it means that we have some time to uh, make some actions to avoid secondary reaction. Additionally, here we have MTT is safety barrier. So if it works well, then uh, this combination of all temperatures has a low risk. A second one, again, here we have a primary temperature increase during primary reaction. Here is the beginning of secondary reaction. Uh, again, we have enough time between end of primary reaction and beginning of secondary reaction, but here we have no a uh, safety barrier as a technical temperature between the first and the second, between the primary and secondary reaction, because it is somewhere upstairs. So uh, here we have a second class, and here risk is a little bit higher because here we have no safety barrier between uh, the primary and secondary reaction. Then we have uh, situation number three again, uh, first. Uh, primary reaction, secondary reaction, and the safety barrier is inside primary reaction. It means that if we have cooling failure and then a safety barrier, uh, for some cases it doesn't work, then we have the situation like number two. But it is in any case uh, everywhere here, one, two, and three, there is enough time between the end of primary reaction and begin of secondary reaction. But now it could be a different situation. We have a primary reaction here, and the end temperature of primary reaction is higher than the begin of a secondary reaction. We have overlapping of primary and secondary reaction. It means that the secondary reaction uh, triggered or started uh, before the end of primary reaction. So if the primary reaction starts and goes to end, then before the end of the primary reaction, we have begin of a secondary reaction, and it is dangerous. The uh, generally much dangerous as the first three first three situations. The only uh, point which could help here is our safety barrier. Uh, the MTT safety barrier, technical temperature, between inside the primary reaction. And if it works well, then generally we can manage uh, this uh, situation. But it is dangerous, but it could be managed. And here is the last one, where safety barrier is somewhere outside. And if a primary reaction started, then it goes to the end, and during the primary reaction, the uh, secondary reaction starts. And uh, this situation must never happen. And if you have these temperatures uh, like here, then the, uh, this process must be redesigned. It uh, must not be started. Here we have five criticality classes with a risk level from low to high, and uh, we can use it. Again, what is important? Important to know this value, TG24. If you know this, then we can make some risk assessment. If you don't know this, then it is impossible and it could be dangerous. Now, let's start here. We have our diagram with severity and probability, with low risk and high risk here. 
and uh, for severity and probability we can create different classes of severity depending on uh, temperature increase delta t adiabatic below 50 below 200 below 400 and above 400 k and for probability it's time time uh, below one hour below eight hours 24 hours and above 24 hours and then our diagram with low and high risk will have 16 different uh, cells and each cell has their own uh, risk level acceptable or not acceptable and if we see here on our first graph temperature uh, versus uh, the time to maximum rate adiabatic, then we can put here the values of one hour with high temperature, uh, eight hour with uh, uh, much lower temperature than 24 hours with our TD24, it's our temperature. And if we have temperature uh, below than the TD24, then we have enough time to maximum rate and in this case we have mostly the green uh, cells where the risk is acceptable risk level is acceptable and if we below then we have higher higher and higher risk and below one hour the risk is very high and it is really unacceptable and now how to find this value of TD24 uh, here, with our instrument and our software, we have uh, different methods, uh, some of them based on a single curve and some of uh, several curves. Uh, the single curves could be used only for non-reaction type and non-reaction type for chemical processes are usually the reactions with decomposition because decomposition reactions are normally reactions of n's order. So uh, we make restrictions for single curve methods only for decomposition reactions. If we have something else, uh, autocatalysis, or if we don't know what kind of reaction type, then we may not use single curve. And if we don't know reaction type, if you don't know how many reaction steps, then you must use multi-curve analysis. For single curve, we need one experiment, laboratory experiment on ARC instrument. And from these ARC instruments, we have two methods. One is linear method, which is based on zero, on approximation of zero order reaction. Another is non-linear TMR method, which is based on nth order reaction. And another multi-curve analysis. Here we need several experiments. It could be either DC experiments or ARC experiments. And then we can make a kinetic, kinetic uh, model and then use it for calculation of TG24. ARC, uh, ARC uh, ARC instruments uh, from our company, we have either very big or the second is, uh, here is ARC 244 and a second one is a table version. And they work uh, with a and adiabatic conditions where we have a reactant inside container and no heating which coming in, no heating which goes out and uh, for adiabatic system, the increasing of a temperature goes only because of exothermal chemical reaction inside. And now we measure this uh, temperature increase. Here are our data, which are really measured for decomposition of DTBP in toluene. We use a heat weight search mode. Here we just looking for a reaction. If we don't find anything, then we just make a small heating and then looking at, the, at another temperature. And then we come for the temperature where a search mode has found 
yes, it's something correct and we have temperature increase, then this temperature increase is measured and then again heat wave search method works and we are looking for a next step, for example, for secondary reaction and in this case it's only one reaction is measured and no other exists in any case. Here we can measure thermal inertia, uh, temperature increase, specific heat of reaction uh, per gram or specific heat of reaction uh, generally for whole reaction. And what is the main parameter of arc, arc measurements is a thermal inertia factor, is a five factor. And if we have a heating of reactant only, then the reaction heat goes for heating of the reactant only and we have a high value of temperature increase of delta T. But if reactant is inside container then the same reaction heat goes for heating of the reactant plus container together and therefore the observed temperature increase is less because the same heat goes for the heating of the whole system, material plus container together. And characteristic of this system is so-called thermal inertia factor, five factor, which is the ratio from a heat capacity of whole system, material plus material and container to the heat capacity of uh, material only. Uh, if this factor equal to one, then we have no container at all. And if we have container uh, with the same heat capacity as the material, then the five factor is equal to two and so on. During our measurements, if we measure the same material at different five factors, then we have for one factor, uh, something like this temperature increase. For low five factor, we have high temperature increase and fast uh, in temperature increase, uh, so low value of time to maximum rate. And for high in the thermal inertia factor, we have low temperature increase and uh, long or time to maximum rate. Then if we have this data, then usually for chemical, for kinetic analysis, we must recalculate them to degree of conversion. Here we have reactant, temperature of reactant before reaction, temperature of product after reaction, we have temperature increase, then we make a ratio between total temperature increase to current temperature increase and have value alpha which is changed from zero to one, zero before reaction start and one is uh, after reaction end. And now we have a standard kinetic equation for our how our alpha uh, changed with time. Alpha is our degree of conversion which is changed from zero to one. Here we have uh, first is reaction rate we have a pre-exponential factor, f of alpha is the reaction type, for example, and order reaction, and k of t is some dependence on temperature. According to Arrhenius, this k of t has dependence uh, using activation energy divided by rt, where activation energy is the energy barrier between a reactant and state and transition state and each molecule must over jump this transition state. Here again we have pre-exponential factor reaction type and activation energy. And if we know this reaction rate then we can calculate how energy is produced uh, during our process uh, per second. So here is our reaction rate. We multiply it by, uh, by heat, reaction heat. And then we know how many heat do we have. And this heat goes for the heating of material and container together. Here CP is heat capacity of material. 
multiply by five factor is together it's a heat capacity of material inside our container and if we multiply by uh, temperature rate then we have the heat for heating of the whole system again the heat for heating of the whole system comes from chemical reaction here is the heat balance and now if we make a linear approximation with zero order reaction then where f of alpha is equal to one then we can find following the log of time to maximum rate is proportional to one divided by t it is the absolute temperature and it means that if we put some axis with temperature and time but non-linear here vertically is one divided by temperature you see that the difference between 100 and 120 degrees c is not the same as between 100 and 200 because it's a temperature is, according to temperature is non-linear scale it is linear according to one divided by t and horizontally we make time to maximum rate in logarithmic scale here is one minute 10 minutes uh, 100 minutes, 1000 minutes, then we, we must have from experiment one straight line. Let's try to do this. Here is our data. We have exothermal segment and put it in this axis. Here is beginning, here is beginning, here is end, here is end, but we have non-linear scales, a scale for time and for temperature, and therefore we have a straight line here. We can make linear approximation, and then we have a straight line which works well at low values of conversion at the beginning of reaction. And this linear approximation for measured uh, five factor above one. Here, according to this linear approximation, we can go to the left to very high values of time to maximum rate. We can select on the x axis. Uh, 24 hours and then see from this linear approximation what is TG24. Um, and now it is important to know what is the time to mark, uh, what is TG24, not for whole system, uh, together with container, but what happens for pure material because for big volume containers doesn't play a role and we have only a diabetic temperature increase. In this case, let's see on this equation, we have here log of five factor. We must move this linear approximation down by log phi. And now we put it down with the same slope and have a blue line with linear extrapolation for phi for five factor equal to one. Here is pure adiabatic linear approximation for uh, our material. And again, for 24 hours, we can find what is TG24 for pure material. This was linear approximation. Here we have a screen from our software, how it works. Just one click and you have a result. Now is a second method, which called nonlinear TMR extrapolation. Here we recalculate from phi factor uh, phi 1 to another factor phi 2. And here we have the same equation which is written for first factor uh, thermal inertia and then for the second one. And then we take a point where the conversion of on the first reaction and of the second reaction are the same and then make divide the first reaction the first equation to the second one and have the final equation and here the, we can use this equation to recalculate uh, our from our measured curve to another curve at another five factor and another initial temperature how it works here we have a red measured curve at some high 
temperature with some high phi factor and then we use this non-linear approximation to find uh, the curve with phi factor equal to one with time to maximum rate uh, 24 hours it's 1440 minutes and then we can see what is the uh, what is tg24 this is our non-linear approximation and i think uh, here is a comparison of both methods linear term approximation is based on zero order simplification and therefore result is not very accurate and it works only for a low conversion region non-linear approximation has uh, the only assumption that the activation energy is a constant for the whole process and then activation energy can be found from the first point uh, where we think that it probably ends or the reaction, but we don't know what happens after that. It would be a really complex process. No simplification is done and result is more accurate. And I think I will show right now how it works inside our software. Here we have our measurement. And now we select preparing of time to maximum rate diagram. Yes, here is our curve. We make linear approximation here, select two point for the lines, same linear approximation. We recalculate from actual factor to five factor equal to one, wait uh, 24 hours, say apply, okay. Here is uh, TD24 for measured phi factor together with container and here tg24 for uh, phi factor equal one for pure reactant without container that was a first linear approximation and now we can make non-linear approximation yeah we remove it remove linear approximation make non-linear approximation again for phi factor is equal to one and apply and uh, here ready here is our measured curve and here our a recalculated curve to another five factor and to uh, calculate to find time to maximum rate here we can see what is the initial point here is our value for uh, TD, TD, TD24 that was uh, approximation and now I would like to show you the another method, more accurate method by Kinetic Snail software. Kinetic Snail software uh, works with several experimental cars, and here we use multi curve analysis. Here, and we use either DC data or ARC data. In this case, we are able to work with processes where some several consecutive reactions are happens, or maybe uh, decomposition of mixture happens. So we have for the mixture decomposition of each individual component uh, separately, independent from other. Sometimes it could be some competing reactions or probably it could be something really complex. And in order to find this kinetic model, we need several, ex several experiments at different temperature conditions. How it works? Firstly, we go to laboratory, make measurement at different temperature conditions, then put this data into the software, recalculate to degree of conversion, all these several measurements. Then for these several measurements, we create one kinetic model and this kinetic model must describe all measurements at different conditions. So uh, this kinetic mod model has only uh, parameters which are independent on temperature conditions. 
uh, for example, activation energy or reaction order. And then we use our kinetic model for predictions or for calculation TG24. How it works? Firstly, we have a conversion for one curve. Then we make conversion. Uh, then we make measurement for other curve with low thermal inertia five factor and high inertial five factor. Then recalculate it to conversion as well. And now we have uh, several curves for the same reaction which are done at different temperature conditions and then we can analyze them. How to change five factor during experiments? So we can change either if we don't know what kind of reaction then we can change a ratio between reactant mass and container mass or another possibility if we know that here is a reaction of the first order then we can make uh, the solution and we can add a solvent and this solvent will work uh, like container just uh, something with additional mass without any reactive properties so solvent will increase thermal energy but again it works only for first order reaction where a reaction uh, rate is independent on concentration but if we have reaction of a second order or if we have outer catalysis or if we have any another reaction type then it doesn't work and now uh, here is example which is done by Kinetics Neo software with acceleration reaction colorimetry, but we do it a little bit more intelligent. We use not pure adiabatic measurement, but adiabatic with constant temperature, uh, with constant power input. Here, no, nothing goes out, but we have a constant power. Why? Just to make uh, it is faster and more accurate. And increasing of a temperature, of measured temperature, go, has two, par, two factors. One is a constant power and another is the exothermal reaction. Let's see here, uh, no reaction. We have a small increase because of constant power. After reaction, we have again constant uh, temperature increase because of this constant power. And then during analysis, we can just remove a straight baseline and make a uh, recalculation. Here is uh, DTBP intolerant, uh, yeah, uh, for 20%, 50%. 15% and 5%. And now we have a different steps and we can analyze all this data together. Here we put our data into kinetic analysis. Here the points are experimental data, lines are fit with a first order reaction. And then we can put this first order reaction for simulation of adiabatic temperature increase at different initial temperatures. And we can see what happens. Or another possibility, we have uh, another function inside the software, one click, and then we can find TD24. It is exactly 24 hours and find the initial temperature. Here is another possibility. Here we have a differential scanning colorimetry. For differential scanning colorimetry, we need several measurements uh, with different temperature conditions, for example, with different heating rate, like here, fast heating, slow heating. Then we have several curves with a peak, which shows our exothermal reaction. After that, a uh, software recalculate uh, this peak to conversion. Conversion is calculated as the ratio between the current uh, part of DC peak to the total uh, peak area. And again, it, it just changed from zero to one here. And now uh, for using of kinetic snare, we should think about what kind of chemical reaction, uh, what kind of reaction type it could be. For example, for decomposition, usually the reaction of nth order 
should be found or should be selected because it's typical for uh, decomposition. If we have a reaction with autocatalysis, then a type of reaction could be different. For example, here we have autocatalytical part and uh, the reaction rate depends on uh, 1 minus alpha, its concentration of B, and alpha power to M at the concentration of A here. And this reaction type called autocatalytical reaction of proud Tompkins, which is typical. And sometimes for some curing or cross-linking, the reaction of Kamal Soro could be used. And here we have two pathways from A to B. And the first pathway is ends order reaction here. And another one is autocatalytical reaction, which has the own activation energy and each which has dependence on the product. So the product work as a catalyst. And now we have an uh, example which is based on DC data. It is cyclopentadien. And the question, what is the initial temperature? Uh, what is the TG24 for? Uh, phi factor equal to 1 for thermal inertia equal to 1. Here we just should put enthalpy, we should put a specific heat phi factor and we should find uh, put a desire uh, time to maximum uh, time to maximum rate. If you put 24 hours, then the software will calculate what is initial temperature here for uh, the time to maximum rate 24 hours. In this case, it's about minus three degrees C. And it is in agreement with all literature uh, here, just a couple of links and uh, we can, if you find more than it's in agreement. And now I would like to show you uh, the software here. Here we have, I just switch off. Now, the legend. Again, here I will switch everything. Here we have data. A first data is a measurement for 5%. Here is a temperature increase. But here, for this temperature increase, we have already uh, removed a baseline. So you see only temperature step. It is starts from zero and finished somewhere at 22. Then we make the same for 10% of DTBP. It starts from zero and finished somewhere here. And then we have for 15%. Here the time axis is somewhere moved uh, because there is no really initial uh, point of reaction. So it uh, the time is not important for kinetic analysis. Uh, here, because it's not pure adiabatic, it's uh, the measurement with a constant input. And therefore, here the temperature is measured separately. We can just see how it is measured. Here we have a temperature and we use this temperature and we use a temperature increase for analysis. Let's go. We go to model base, create a model of the first order. So here we have almost final, almost good uh, fit. Uh, here is R square is 0 0.998. We can make a little bit optimization. Now it is 0 0.9995. And now we can use this model for simulation. Just go to uh, adiabatic 24 here we can it is uh, this function is for calculation of TG24 we select our model we put here the enthalpy for example 300 joule per gram specific heat is 2 joule per gram 5 factor TMR adiabatic and say calculate now the software is calculate initial temperature for these conditions is 99 uh, degrees C. If you would like to know what is uh, TD8 
for eight hours. Then we can put here eight hours, press calculate and found that the uh, CD for eight hours is uh, 107 degrees C. For one hour, it is 124. Here you see 60 minutes on horizontal axis. So here is very, very fast method how to make calculation. And now I would like to show a DSC. It will be a really fast cyclopentadien. Here we have a measurements for cyclopentadien. And now we add uh, a model. I say ends order reaction. We can make some kind of optimization on parameters in order to have a good fit between experimental data and our simulated data. Now we have a good fit. R square is 0.9995 here. And now we switch to time and try to find uh, TD24. Uh, uh, TD Enthalpy is taken from DC data directly i will not put it here uh, specific heat uh, now it is two but you can change it five factor is one a tmr is uh, 24 hours we say calculate we have result we can show the temperature program uh, the temperature and here is conversion rate here uh, the first curve the upper curve this one is conversion rate, which shows uh, where a reaction is mostly intensive. And the lower curve is the temperature. It is with a right axis of temperature, and it shows how, how what is the temperature increase, adiabatic temperature increase do we have. And the uh, maximum rate here is 24 hours, so you see. If you would like to make it for another factor, five factor, then it works. If you would like to calculate it for another temperature, uh, for another time, not 24 hours, but 72 hours, it works as well. Again, we have already here uh, different methods for calculation of TG24. One of them two of them was based on single curve and only for ends order reaction based on arc experiment uh, linear and non-linear and another is multi-curve analysis uh, we use here kinetics neo and it is based either on dsc data or on arc data so from my side everything is okay now i would like here so here First, thank you for your attention. And now I would like to open questions and answer on your questions. Here. Can Kinetics Neo import CSV data from other DSC platform? Yes, we can import CSV data and uh, we work we can import uh, data in ascii format uh, here we need three columns time temperature and signal and signal for dc is a uh, heat flow signal for uh, arc data is temperature again and uh, they could be either in uh, ASCII data or in CSV data with these three columns. So it's no any problem and it works because uh, such requ request we have already several years ago and we have implemented. Uh, then we have a question. Is it possible to make anal kinetic analysis uh, for overlapping process? Uh, the answer is uh, that we can do this uh, only for multi-curve analysis. So single curve analysis cannot work with overlapping process, but if you work with multi-curve analysis with kinetics neo, then uh, the kinetics work can kinetics now can analyze 
multi-curve analysis. And next one. Is it possible to make kinetic analysis for both primary and secondary process together? I think it is uh, partially the same question. And yes, we can uh, make analysis for both primary and secondary uh, processes together. In this case, a primary uh, process and secondary process will be implemented into kinetic model as a separate individual steps. And they could be either independent from each other or it could be connected as the following steps. I have, so firstly, I have very many questions and I right now that was at the beginning not so much and now it is full screen and i have no time i'm sorry thank you for everybody for the questions and uh yes i i will answer all the questions uh by email in any case and Again, thank you very much for your attentions and for your questions, and I will answer all the questions. Thank you.